The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how Perla 8800S works. I'm going to create an embroidery file by digitizing an image using some of the tools available in the software so you can see how easy and powerful Perla is. So let's get started. So I'm going to go to File and then New. And this window will display. In here, you can select different recipes for your design depending on which type of fabric you want to sew. In this case, I will pick Normal. On Machine Formats, you can select the format you are going to use for your embroidery machine. In my case, I will choose DST and then I will click OK. Now I'm going to bring out the image that I'm going to digitize. I'm going to click this button that is Backdrop Tool and the open dialog will display. I will select my image and then I will click open. Now that I have my image on screen, I will zoom in. Now I'm going to pick my drawing mode. The software offers three options. We have line, VZA, and freehand. In this case, I will use VZA. Then I'm going to pick my digitizing tool. So I'm going to start with complex fill. I'm going to start with the body of the fish. So I'm going to place my first point here. And my next point, I will put it here. And then I'm going to hold my key in my mouse and I'm going to pull until I got the shape. Then I will press my control key and I will go back to the knob. I will repeat this process until I finish the shape. Remember, this is not a tutorial, this is just a demonstration of how Perla works. In order to close the shape, I will press this button, close shape, and the orientation stitch line will appear. And this time I want a different orientation, so I will create my own. I will right click my mouse and a green dot will appear. The green dot represents the starting point and the red dot represents the ending point. I will right click again and the stitches will appear on screen. Now that I have finished the body, I will move on to the eyelids. I will pick my complex fill tool and I will start digitizing the eyelids. The reason for digitizing the eyelids separately it's to be able to choose a different stitching orientation so you can distinguish between the different parts of the fish after it's embroidered. And now I have finished the body and the eyelids of the fish. You can see here how the stitch looks. Now the next segment that I'm going to do is the white area of the eyes. So my next step is to change color. In this case I will pick a light gray so I can distinguish between the image and the stitching. I will zoom in and then I'm going to pick my complex fill tool and I'm going to start here. And here I'm going to leave the same orientation as the eyelids. 
I want to start here and then I'm going to finish here then right click and the stitches will appear after you have successfully set up your starting point and ending point you can always edit your segment by using the shape tool In order to avoid my machine from stopping and trimming, I will use my run stitch to travel through the design to get to the other eye. I will travel through the outlines and this will be covered later. Now I will pick up my complex fill tool and I'm going to create the other white segment of the eye. As you can see, now I have finished the orange and white segments of the design. So now the next segment will be the pupils. I will pick up my complex fill tool and I will start here. In order to avoid color mixing between two fill stitches of different colors, the fill stitch orientation on top must be different. So in this case, the fill stitch of the pupil will be perpendicular to the one used in the white space. I will use my run stitch tool in order to travel to the other segment of the design. So now that I have finished the eyeballs, I will proceed with the outline of the design. For the outline, I will use the steel tool. Left click, left click, and right click. Using the run stitch, I will travel to another area of the design. So my next segment will be this curve of the eye. I'm going to use the shape tool so I can edit the ending point because I want a different ending point. I want my steel column to finish here so I can create that line. 
So I will move the red dot of where I want to finish. And then I will pick my steel tool and I will create that line. I will pick my run stitch and I will travel through the design to another area. I will stop here and then I will create the shapes of the tail. For these shapes I will use the Saturn Path tool. Now using the run stitch tool, I will travel through my design to the fin. In order to digitize the fin, I will use the Saturn Path tool. After the shape has been done, the orientation must be specified. As you can see, I have finished the tail and the fin. Now we will proceed with the outline. In order to do this, I will travel with the run stitch tool to the point where I want to start my outline. In order to create the outline, I will use the steel tool.
After I have finished the outline, I will proceed with the mouth. I will zoom in and I will pick the Saturn Path tool. After I have finished the mouth, I will hide the image to see my final work. Now I will add the original colors. This is a 3D view of the final design. Now it's time to run a test in the machine. I hope you have enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.